Hi guys, Blackbox here. In this video I'll be talking about the flight path vector, or the bird for short. The flight path vector is just a simple flight reference um, regarding the track, so the horizontal track of the aircraft and the vertical flight path angle. And those informations are just simply presented on the primary flight display in form of a little green airplane symbol. Okay, so how do we activate the so-called flight path vector? Or the bird, as it's also called. It's uh, quite simple. The first thing that has to be done is um, the flight director has to be switched off. And the second step, you will need to press the heading track vertical speed flight path angle button on the uh, flight control unit. If you press that, you can see up on top in the window it says track FPA and in the primary flight display you will now see the flight path vector. So in essence the BERT or the flight path vector indicates the track and the flight path angle in relation to the ground. So at the moment you can see that the wind is from the left, so the flight path vector is uh, right of center, indicating we're drifting to the right. And also the flight path vector is on the horizon, um, showing you that um, the flight path angle in relation to the ground is a zero, and hence the altitude is maintained. So let's now turn the aircraft right into the wind, and then you should see that the flight path vector drift indication will start to move towards the center and once it's exactly in the center it indicates that there's no more drift in relation to the um, horizontal track. Just as we um, level the wings out, you can see that the flight path vector is showing almost zero drift. And hence, um, that visually indicates very quickly to you whether or not the aircraft is drifting um, left or right of the, um, the present heading of the aircraft. Now, vertically, the flight path vector is um, showing you for one the track in regard to the horizon um, i.e. the ground but it's also indirectly showing you the angle of attack i.e. the um, angle between the longitudinal axis of the aircraft and the flight path and so in this example now we have about four degree pitch nose up while the flight path vector is still on the horizon showing you we're not descending or climbing i.e. the airflow is um, directly coming from the front and so you can say that the angle of attack at the moment is four degrees now i'll just quickly demonstrate to you the different angle of attacks um, between the slow speed and the high speed regime of the aircraft so presently we're slowing down to green dot speed, maintaining level 250. And we can see that the nose or the longitudinal axis of the aircraft is about 6 degree pitch up above the horizon, while the flight path vector indicates that we're still maintaining level flight. And so the angle of attack in this case is um, six degrees. Let me just um, give you a picture here um, to illustrate this a little bit uh, more detailed. So the black square with the yellow border on the primary flight display shows the longitudinal pitch axis of the aircraft. And in the picture that's the blue line or the blue arrow, whilst the flight path vector, um, the green arrow, 
is showing you the flight path of the aircraft, in this case, level flight. And um, so you can say that the angle of attack is six degrees, the difference between the pitch and the flight path. And at that slow airspeed, of course, you would expect that a high angle of attack to get the lift required to maintain level flight. All right, so let's now speed up the aircraft close to the uh, maximum speed. And then uh, we'll take a look how much angle of attack is required at high speed. All right, here we are at 330 knots. And you can pretty much see that the pitch angle of the aircraft is about well, almost zero, let's say half a degree above the horizon and the flight path vector is still indicating um, level flight. Also showing a little bit drift to the right of center. So let's have a look again at a picture from the side. And here again you can see that the pitch angle is about 0 0.5 degrees above the horizon whilst the flight path vector is showing level flight. And so in this case the angle of attack regarding the airflow is about 0 0.5 uh, degrees. And um, flying this fast obviously creates a lot of lift and therefore the angle of attack regarding the airflow can be very low. So let's now get into the practical use of the flight path vector. Now most commonly the flight path vector will be used um, when you're doing a visual approach or a non-position approach where you're not having any flight director guidance per se um, but are flying maybe with a degraded system um, and the flight path vector in this case will help you um, quickly visualize the flight path of the aircraft. And as you can see we've just started a slow descent now and the flight path vector is below the horizon and that indicates to you that the flight path the vertical flight path of the aircraft is now below the horizon, i.e. the aircraft is descending. Also note that the pitch of the aircraft is still above the horizon at about 1.5 degrees. And um, so the pitch of the aircraft is misleading um, with regard to whether or not the aircraft is climbing or descending. Let's prepare for an approach into Munich, runway 26 right, and um, we'll be flying a non-position NDB approach. Entering all the important weather data informations. And the minimum, which is um, 2050 feet and of course we need the beacon itself Mike November whiskey um, so we can uh, navigate by raw data indications okay, so we're now passing 8,000 feet we can see that the flight path vector is at about minus two and a half degrees if we lower the nose further that will of course also alter the flight path of the aircraft in relation to the horizon. Uh, we're now getting a minus five degrees um, flight path vector and so the rate of ascent also obviously increases. Now of course during the descent, the final descent um, from our 5,000 feet initial descent um, altitude the profile of the approach is 3.03 uh, degrees and so you can imagine that um, the flight path vector later on will help us um, to achieve that exact angle. And so we don't need to work out a vertical speed um, in relation to the extra ground speed. Um, the flight path vector will do that for us.
So skipping forward a little bit, we can see that we're presently maintaining S speed, so we've slowed down quite considerably. And the flight path vector is on the horizon, showing you level flight. And have a look at the pitch attitude of the aircraft. We're about 7 degrees nose up, showing a very high pitch. But as, we, as I said, we're still maintaining altitude. And so the angle of attack regarding the airflow is about 7 degrees. Now we're slowly approaching the final descent point. And once we do that, what we will have to do is set the flight path vector at uh, minus 3 degrees. And that way we will be following the correct um, path, vertical path, towards the runway. So here we are at the descent point. We've selected three degrees of nose down path. We'll just let it stabilize. And uh, from here on, it's uh, very easy to follow the correct um, vertical path. Looking at the ground speed, 135 knots, we can, uh, by rule of thumb, work out we'll need about 700 or just a little bit um, above 700 feet per minute rate of descent. Configuring the aircraft further now towards final configuration. Arming the spoilers. Now we have a lot of headwind, 34 knots headwind, and so you can see the ground speed mini function setting our target speed presently above 150 knots yeah, around about 152 knots. Now we've just become a little bit high in the profile, so we're going to have to adjust the rate of descent, i.e. the flight path vector. I've put that to minus 3.8 degrees in order to catch up with the correct uh, glide profile. Since we're approaching the correct um, path again, We'll adjust the flight path angle back to about 3 degrees. Let the aircraft stabilize. So pretty simple to fly a non-precision approach in the Airbus. Um, you can even fly this um, manually without the autopilot. All you need to do then is adjust your pitch attitude of the aircraft to meet the 3 degree glide profile regarding uh, the flight path vector. Now you would also check the pitch attitude at the moment plus 2 degrees um, to have a relation um, where the flight path vector is at minus 3 degrees and that way you can quickly adjust um, around that value, so around that pitch value and then um, stabilize the aircraft really quickly at the um, desired flight path angle. So one last time, let's have a look at the side view of the aircraft. And again, we can see longitudinal axis, i.e. the pitch axis is at plus 2.5 degrees, while the flight path vector is at minus 3 degrees, i.e. the angle of attack regarding the airflow is um, about 5.5 degrees. and Again, the nose of the aircraft is showing above the horizon or pointing above the horizon while the flight path of the aircraft is below the horizon and hence the aircraft is descending. Right, 
Let's do manual flight. Above. Autopilot is off. With the runway inside, we'll continue visually now. And now it's just the same deal. Um, adjust the pitch Minimum. in order to adjust the flight path vector at uh, minus three degrees. If you need to correct slightly for the path, um, do so. But always try to return to the mentioned pitch value of two and a half degrees. That way, 400. if the speed remains constant, you know that the flight path will also stabilize at minus three degrees. 300. One hundred. Fifty. Forty. Thirty. Twenty. Retard. Retard. Five. Here we are, landed successfully in Munich. Um, so there you go. Very short video about how to use the flight path vector of the Airbus A320X in FS Labs. I do hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. More videos will be coming on this channel. So as always, have fun flying, take care, happy landings. <laughs>